reach the island. Hello, all of you creative types. How are you? I'm fine. It looks like the sky is going to fall outside. It is very dark. And it looks really bad. But I wanted to uh, talk to you about a resin issue. Um, when you buy, I, I use Envirotex Light Resin. And it's a, uh, it's like a finishing resin that you use on furniture and countertops. But it's made the same, it's the same stuff as just regular molding resin. I've been using it a long time. Um, but there's an issue with it. And I didn't realize it until just this past month when this, these two bottles I bought in July. Okay? And this is the hardener. And you see how it's turned yellow? This is the resin, this is the hardener. And I, I was getting it out to try something and I real, look at how yellow it is. This is practically new to me. Why is it doing this? Um, because when it does this, when it turns yellow, it changes the properties of the, uh, the resin, the hardener. It makes it more difficult to cure. It takes two days instead of one. It's more difficult to mix. Um, the bubbles don't want to come to the surface as easily. It is a real pain in the neck. And this stuff isn't cheap. It's expensive. So I went searching on the internet. Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> why? Why? Because I, not all of my bottles do this. Just some of them. Why do you do this? And it turns out that this stuff is very sensitive to light. To light and to heat. <laughs> so, I'm so mad. If I'd known, I would have stored the, this in a very different area. I've been keeping it on my work table here, which is right in front of a window, and it hates sunlight. Hates it. I didn't bother to keep the box. I just didn't think it was necessary. But I have done that in the past. When I keep it in the box, this stuff say, stays nice and clear as it usually does. When you first buy it, it's not the same color as the resin part. It is a little bit different, but it's not like this. It does not, it's not amber like this. It's just different. A little different. Oh. So, now I know that don't store this in light. Don't heat up the whole bottle like I've been doing. Don't do that, unless you're going to use the whole thing in a few days or a week. Oh, I'm so, I was so wrong. I a mistake. Don't do that. Heat up little bits if you need to. Keep it in the dark. I'm really upset. It still works. It just doesn't work as nicely as what is brand new. When you go to buy it at the store, open the box and look at the bottles. If the hardener bottle is yellow, don't buy it. Just look for a different package. Take it to the uh, service counter even and say, look, this resin is bad. You shouldn't be selling it. Um, or can I exchange it for, you know, a fresher package? That would be nice. Chances are they don't even know. So I went searching on the internet looking for why, and, and that's why. And there are other uh, epoxy resins out there that come in opaque bottles or cans. Uh, what was West Systems was one. I haven't bought any yet. It's expensive. But I'm definitely going to try another brand um, so I don't have to deal with this waste. It is outrageous. I don't want to deal with that. 
what a waste of money. So what I wanted to do when I realized my resin was not that good, but I did make a couple. I wanted to make charms with pictures of my kids and my grandkids. Can you see them? This is Sean. This is Ashley. This is Nick. This is Samantha. This is Samantha. This is Nick. And this is Rie and Kento that I got paint all over and you can't see them. But this is my grandson, Kento. Whoops. Right here. He's really cute. He and his mom and dad live in Japan. My son and daughter-in-law. And he's really adorable and very sweet and a very cute boy. And he just turned four. So, the way I made these charms, this is the one of Sam. She did a color run. Crazy picture. And they're very, you know, stiff and, you know, look okay. I thought this would be fun for a grandma for Christmas. Something like that. And I didn't coat the paper. I printed... Their images, everything's about an inch, an inch, okay? Just shrunk them down in my art software. That stuff is really cheap. You can pick some up anywhere, really cheap. Uh, and shrunk them down to about an inch square or uh, one inch by whatever the width or height comes out to. Um, and this is card stock. I bought some white card stock and printed it out on that. And then I cut them very close. Need two because I make them back to back like this. Okay. So I know that a lot of people use a glue based product like Mod Podge or something to coat the images. I didn't do that. I just used packing tape, which worked really well. Stayed nice and clean. Pull out some packing tape, and on one of the images, you want to coat, you want to tape both sides, like this, and then I use something to really burnish it down, get it really stuck on that paper, like that, then I did the other side. Burnish it down. It's really stuck on there. Yeah, I have a little laminate of Kento right there. On this one, you're going to do the same thing. We're going to use something stiffer to make it nice and stiff. So this is just some chipboard that I get at work. It comes in boxes for free. And I glued it down with a glue stick and then cut it out and just like this one, tape both sides. Okay? <clears throat> Open. Out as close as you can. If you have a punch, that would be good. Here. 
this helps protect it from the resin leaking through and causing damage to the image. Discolors it and looks weird. Same on the other side. When you cut this out, you want to leave a good quarter inch or so, a couple millimeters. You want to leave some of that plastic. You want to leave a lip. both pieces. And then you want to get these two pieces together as evenly as you can by using, I don't know, a glue stick or a glue dot or something. The point is you do want to leave a gap in here for the resin to get in between the plastic but not touch the paper. And this really worked out well. Um, I'll show you one I made of Ashley. When it's stuck together, okay, then you take your tweezers, dip it in your resin, and lay it on your plastic to cure. And when it's all cured, you will get... When it's all cured, you'll get a thing like this. This took two days to get to this point. Then you can just cut it out. It's very easy to cut when it's thin like this. Then, alright, this is Ashley and Nick, my youngest daughter and her oldest son. Yes, they are very cute. Then you take some <clears throat> sandpaper. This is, what is this? 320 grit. 20 grit. That's what I used. You could probably use something else, whatever. And I don't think it's that important. And I filed the edges. Get them as even as I could. It's nice and clean. Get rid of all that jiggity jaggedy from cutting it. as you like. Right here. Then I found a paint pen. Don't really like it. It's not as thick as I'd like. What is this one? It's a Sharpie. I wanted some that was, you know, like a glossy enamel -y paint, and this is not that. But, oh well. And... I colored the edges to make them kind of, it's just not metallic enough. Alright, that's all you do. That's all I did. So, that's that. And then I punched a hole, added a jump ring, put it on a chain, just screwing around. I'm taking all these ugly beads off. And there you have it. 
So, that's that. Hope you have a bead project next week. And, mm, I hope everybody's okay. Hope you're doing well. And I'll see you next week. Stay happy. Stay inspired. Your life belongs to you. Thank you for sharing my videos. I appreciate it. Bye.